Thank you very much. President Johannes, thank you for being here. It's an honor to welcome such a good friend of America to the White House. As you know, the people of Romania and America share much in common. A love of freedom, proud cultures, rich traditions, and a vast and storied landscape to call home. The relationship between our two countries stretches back well over a century. But today, we especially reaffirm and celebrate our strategic partnership that began more than 20 years ago. That partnership covers many dimensions, including economic, military, and cultural ties. And today, we are making those ties even stronger. Mr. President, your visit comes at an important moment, not just in this partnership, but among all of the responsible nations of the world. I have just returned from a historic trip to Europe and the Middle East, where I work to strengthen our alliances, forge new friendships, and unite all civilized peoples in the fight against terrorism. No civilized nation can tolerate this violence or allow this wicked ideology to spread on its shores. I addressed a summit of more than 50 Arab and Muslim leaders, a unique meeting in the history of nations, where key players in the region agreed to stop supporting terrorism, whether it be financial, military, or even moral support. The nation of Qatar, unfortunately, has historically been a funder of terrorism at a very high level. And in the wake of that conference, nations came together and spoke to me about confronting Qatar over its behavior. So we had a decision to make. Do we take the easy road, or do we finally take a hard but necessary action? We have to stop the funding of terrorism. I decided, along with Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, our great generals and military people, the time had come to call on Qatar to end its funding. They have to end that funding and its extremist ideology in terms of funding. I want to call on all of the nations to stop immediately supporting terrorism. Stop teaching people to kill other people. Stop filling their minds with hate and intolerance. I won't name other countries, but we are not done solving the problem, but we will solve that problem. Have no choice. This is my great priority because it is my first duty as President to keep our people safe. Defeating ISIS and other terror organizations is something I have emphasized all during my campaign and right up until the present. To do that, stop funding, stop teaching hate, and stop the killing. For Qatar, we want you back among the unity of responsible nations. We ask Qatar and other nations in the region to do more and do it faster. I want to thank Saudi Arabia and my friend King Solomon and all of the countries who participated in that very historic summit. It was truly historic. There has never been anything like it before, and perhaps there never will be again. Hopefully, it will be the beginning of the end of funding terrorism. It will, therefore, be the beginning of the end 
to terrorism. No more funding. I also want to thank the Romanian people for everything they contribute to our common defense and to the fight against the evil menace of terrorism. They have their own difficulties with it, and they've come a long way, and they're doing a lot. Romania has been a valuable member of the coalition to defeat ISIS, and it's the fourth largest contributor of troops in Afghanistan. There, 23 of your citizens have paid the ultimate price, and America honors their sacrifice. I want to recognize President Johannes for his leadership in committing Romania this year to increase its defense spending from 1.4 percent of GDP to over 2 percent. We hope our other NATO allies will follow Romania's lead on meeting their financial obligations and paying their fair share for the cost of defense. But I will say this, that because of our actions, money is starting to pour in to NATO. The money is starting to pour in. Other countries are starting to realize that it's time to pay up, and they're doing that. Very proud of that fact. As you know, I have been an advocate for strengthening our NATO alliance through greater responsibility and burden-sharing among member nations. And that is what is happening. Because together, we can confront the common security challenges facing the world. Mr. President, I want to applaud your courage and your courageous efforts in Romania to fight corruption and defend the rule of law. This work is necessary to create an environment where trade and commerce can flourish and where citizens can prosper. I look forward to working with you to deepen the ties of both commerce and culture between our two countries. Romanians have made contributions to the United States and to the world. Very notable among them was Nobel Prize laureate Elie Wiesel, who was born in Romania and sadly passed away almost one year ago. And I understand that earlier this week, the American Jewish Committee presented President Johannes with its very prestigious Light Unto the Nations Award for his work to further Holocaust, Remembrance, and Education in Romania. I join the AJC in saluting your leadership in this vital cause. The people of Romania have endured many, many hardships, but they have made a truly remarkable historical journey. The future of Romania and Romania's relationship with the United States is very, very bright. President Johannes, I thank you for your leadership, and I thank you again for being here today. I look forward to strengthening our alliance with your country and our bonds with your people. The relationship has been good, but now it's stronger than ever. Thank you very much. President Trump, Thank you so much for the words you found for Romania, for the Romanian people, and for me. Thank you very much for the invitation to be here today with you, and thank you so much for arranging this nice weather in this place. Mr. President, uh, I'm very glad that we had such a good meeting. and. Uh, this is due to your strong leadership, and this is also due to our strong partnership. Obviously, 
fact that we celebrate 20 years of strategic partnership this year is important for both our nations and it is important to know, and this is what I want to underline, that this partnership with the United States of America shaped Romania as it is today. Romania, a solid democracy with a solid, sustainable economic growth. Romania, which stands together with the US troops in Afghanistan. We stand together in Iraq. Mr. President, this partnership contributed greatly to what Romania is today. And this partnership was and is very important. And I think this partnership not only has to continue, this partnership has to become stronger. This partnership has to define our bilateral relation, and this partnership has to contribute to solve so many problems. President Trump, you mentioned terrorism. I'm very glad that due to your strong leadership, NATO decided to go against terrorism. Your involvement made so many nations conscious of the, f of the fact that we have to share the burden inside NATO. And this is why Romania also decided, and if I'm, if I'm right, I think this is the first country in, during your mandate to step up to 2% of GDP for defense spending. A significant part of this defense spending is going into strategic acquisitions. And I hope, President Trump, that we find good ways together to use, to make good use of this money. Romania is very conscious of the fact that we stand on the eastern flank and we heavily, re heavily rely on your partnership, President Trump, because we cannot stand there without the US. We cannot stand there alone. On the other hand, our partnership has a huge opportunity to step up, not only in security matters, but also in commercial and economic matters. And this is very important. Romania is a member of the European Union. And I think it's the best interest of you, Mr. President, to have a strong European Union as a partner. This is vital for all of us. Our relationship, the transatlantic link is vital. Transatlantic link is not about diplomacy, about policy. It's at the basis of our Western civilization. And together, we will make it stronger together we will make it better. NATO and the European Union do not have to compete against each other. They have to work together. They have to work in such a manner as to produce synergetic effects, make NATO stronger, make Europe stronger, make the United States of America stronger. And this is what we decided President Trump and I to make our partnership stronger, better, more enduring. And this will lead very soon to an enhanced economic exchange, to better commerce. And this is what we all decide and what we wish, because we are responsible, President Trump and I, not only for the security we are responsible for the well-being of our citizens, and this is what we are decided to do. Thank you so much, President Trump. Thank you. Uh, Dave Boyer, Washington Times, please. Dave. Thank you. Come on, Dave. Gotta Thank you, Mr. Here, President. Dave. Apologies. That's all right, Dave.
Mr. President, uh, this morning on Twitter, you were referring to the testimony of James Comey vindicating you. But I wondered if you could tell us in person, sir, why you feel that his testimony vindicated you when it's really boils down to his word against your word. And if you could also tell us, sir, are, do tapes exist of your conversations yeah. with him? Well, I'll tell you about that maybe sometime in the very near future. But uh, in the meantime, no collusion, no obstruction. He's a leaker. But we want to get back to running our great country. Jobs, trade deficits, we want them to disappear fast. North Korea, big problem. Middle East, a big problem. So that's what I am focused on. That's what I have been focused on. But yesterday uh, showed no collusion, no obstruction. Uh, we are uh, doing really well. That was an excuse by the Democrats who lost an election that some people think they shouldn't have lost because it's almost impossible for the Democrats to lose the Electoral College, as you know. You have to run up the whole East Coast and you have to win everything as a Republican, and that's just what we did. So it was a, uh, just an excuse, but we were very, very uh, happy. And frankly, uh, James Comey confirmed a lot of what I said, and some of the things that he said just weren't true. Thank you very much. Do you have a question? And, Mr. President, if you could tell us, uh, a couple weeks ago, President Trump was in Brussels at the NATO meeting, and not only was he encouraging NATO members to pay up the 2 percent required of GDP for national defense, but he also was saying that uh, countries, even including yours, who had not paid 2 percent in the past uh, should make up for that, that difference. Uh, do you think that's fair? I was in Brussels, and I met President Trump, and I listened to his speech, and I liked it. Because, you see, NATO is based on values, but it is ultimately a military alliance. And, you know, military spendings are complicated, and you need a lot of money, because NATO is the strongest alliance the Earth ever saw, and we want to keep it that way. So we have to spend money for defense purposes. And spending money means if you're in alliance, everybody has to spend money. This is called burden sharing. And I fully agree, Mr. President, to that. Uh, so of course, some people liked this better, and some didn't like it so much. But it's a simple fact that we have to do this, not as a purpose in itself. We have to do this to stay strong, to be strong, and to defend our nations. 100 percent correct. And you know, one of the things I was referring to during that speech was the fact that, yes, they haven't paid what they should be paying now. But for many years, they haven't been paying. So I said, do we ever go back and say, how about paying the money from many, many years past? Now, I know no president has ever asked that question, but I do. Uh, we're going to make NATO very strong. You need the money to make it strong. You can't just uh, do what we've been doing in the past. So I did say, yes, you haven't paid this year. But what about the past years, the many past years where you haven't paid? Perhaps you should pay some or all of that money back. Uh, you have a question? Thank you. Uh, I have a question for President Trump. Um, on the matter of, uh, of security, sir, you um, Many of the countries on the eastern flank of NATO, including Romania, see Russia as a threat to the security and the peace in the region. Do you share this vision? And uh, do you think that the uh, uh, United States should act under Article 5 if any of these countries will be under military aggression? Thank you very much. Well, 
I'm committing the United States and have committed, but I'm committing the United States to Article 5. And certainly, we are there to protect. And that's one of the reasons that I want people to make sure we have a very, very strong force by paying the kind of money necessary to have that force. But yes, absolutely, I'd be committed to Article 5. Thank you. Mr. President, were there any discussion about the visa waiver program for Romania? Is there a time frame for including our country in this program? Thank you. We didn't yes. discuss it. We didn't discuss it, but there would be certainly it would be something we will discuss, Mr. President. I, I mentioned this issue and uh, I uh, also mentioned it uh, during other meetings uh, I had because this is important for us. It's important for Romanians who want to come to the United States. And you see, more and more people come, President Trump, from Romania to the United States. Some come as tourists, some come for business, and those who come for business should be encouraged. So the matter of visa waiver would be probably uh, important to discuss, and we all hope that uh, we will advance on this. Good. Um, oh, I look at those hands up there, President. Do you have this in Romania too? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got the microphone. Oh, boy. If you allow me, if Mr. I could President. only, if I could only sell that, if I could only sell it. Who would like to ask? Should I take one of the killer networks that? Treat me so badly as fake news. Should I do that? Huh? Go ahead, John. Be fair, John. Oh, absolutely. Remember how um, nice you used to be before I ran? Um, Such a nice man. Always fair. Uh, Mr. President, um, I want to get back to James Comey's testimony. You suggested he didn't tell the truth in everything he said. Uh, he did say under oath that you told him to let the Flynn, uh, or you, you said you hoped the Flynn investigation, you could let, he could I didn't let say that. So he lied about that. Well, I didn't say that. I mean, I will tell you, I didn't say that. And, and did he ask you to pledge his And there'd loyalty? be nothing wrong if I did say it, according to everybody that I've read today, but I did not say that. And, and did he ask for a pledge of loyalty from you? That's another thing he said. No, he did not. So he said those things under oath. Would you be willing to speak under oath to uh, give your version of, of 100%. those events? 100%. And I didn't say under oath. I hardly know the man. I'm not going to say, I want you to pledge allegiance. Who would do that? Who would ask a man to pledge allegiance under oath? I mean, think of it. I hardly know the man. It doesn't make sense. No, I didn't say that, and I didn't say the other. So if Robert Mueller wanted to speak with you about that, you I would, would be, be glad to, to, to tell him exactly what I just told you, Jim. And you seem to be hinting that there are recordings of those conversations. I'm not hinting anything. I'll tell you about it over a very short period of time. What is that? Okay. Okay, do you have a question here? When, when, when will you tell us about the recording? Over a fairly short period of time. Why won't you go now, Mr. President? Are there tapes, sir? Oh, you're going to be very disappointed when you hear the answer. Don't worry. John, do you have a question for the President? Yes. Thank you. And uh, President Johannes, uh, you are no stranger to Russian aggression. Vladimir Putin recently uh, suggested that Romania could be in Russia's crosshairs. Are you... How concerned should the world be about Russian aggression in your region? And how concerned should we be here in the United States about what Russia tried to do in our election, sir? Everybody's concerned. But you see, being concerned should lead you to being prepared. So in, in my opinion, we, we have to be very clear very simple and very straightforward if we talk about Russia and with Russia. In my opinion, we need dialogue. But on the other hand, we need what we all together decided in NATO, a strong deterrence. So this combination, strong deterrence and dialogue should lead towards a solution which is feasible for every part. Hello, Mr. President Trump. You mentioned... Uh, 
Uh, you mentioned earlier the anti-corruption fight in Romania. Uh, it is a, a matter of high importance in, in our country. Uh, but we see now that the anti-corruption anti fight and uh, the efforts to consolidate the rule of law are sometimes undermined by some politicians, part of what we can call the Bucharest swamp. Is your administration going to support the anti-corruption fight in Romania and how can you do it? Thank you. Well, we support very strongly Romania and therefore obviously we do support that fight on anti-corruption. We will always support that and we support your president. We think he's done an outstanding job, very popular, uh, very solid, working very hard. We know everything that's going on and uh, yeah, he, and he's going to win that fight. He's going to win that battle, but he has our support. Thank you so much. Do you see corruption in Romania as a problem for the U.S.-Romania partnership and for the American investor as a threat because we still have corruption in Romania despite this un anti-corruption fight? Well, you do, but I can tell you that there are many American investors right now going to Romania and investing. In fact, I was given a chart just before our meeting, and uh, we have people going over to Romania and investing, and they weren't doing that a number of years ago. So that shows very, very big progress, and there really are a lot of congratulations in store. But a lot of people are investing from our country to yours, and people love from Romania the United States, and they come here a lot, and we're very proud of them. Thank you all very much.